you know, I, I watched your your film last night, which I was I was glad to to see it again. Um, but then I also started watching all the news from the protests in Minneapolis, and it was just really hard uh, to sleep. You know, obviously Claire didn't attempt to make a film that would speak about the murder of uh, George Floyd. It's just we're all at home. This is happening immediately, and going on three hours sleep, I can't not uh, combine compare. Everything is fluid. Everything's happening all at once, and so. But I think your your film is kind of in a way um, related to all these different things. You know, uh, watching it, I I I'm, I was reminded of two things. One, the first film I watched when we finished Moonlight. You know, I came home from Miami and I got to LA, and I have a DVD of Bo Travai, and I couldn't sleep. You know how it is. You finish a film and your mind is just racing. And so I went from watching dailies of Moonlight. I was like, oh, I think I should put on Bo Travai. So it was the first film I watched after we completed photography on Moonlight. And the second thing was watching it last night. It was really calming because I was reminded that the film, it identifies with the people and not the system. You know, it's not identifying with the institution of the Legionnaires. It's identifying with the soldiers who are Legionnaires and really trying to sort of sort of present their humanity outside the system, even though they have to exist within it. So um, even on three hours sleep, I'm very glad to talk to you. Thank you to say that. Maybe I can say why I made this film, although it was an offer from the French TV, but the offer was, could you try to make a film who means uh, to be a foreigner? And as a joke, I answer, yes, to be in the foreign legion. But it was a joke, actually, you know. I thought, I, I remember one reading a quote from Jean-Luc Godard. He said, if I had to do a commercial, I would not sing too much. If it's a Marlboro cigarette, I would for our first film a packet of Marlboro and the great red packet with Marlboro. And I thought, yeah, foreign, let's, let's keep the word foreign in mind. And then immediately foreign legion came, you know, as if foreign was leading me to the legion. So I was not trying to be philosophical. No, I, I thought, let's make it what it is to be foreign in the true sense, like a soldier. He has no way to escape. He's not a tourist. He's not visiting. He's sent. He has a mission, and it could lead him to, to die, or, you know? And at that time, I was shooting in Marseille, Nanette and Bonnie, and we had some night shoots. And on the way back to the hotel at dawn, uh, only one bar was open on, on the port of Marseille. And the only customer there in the bar were a few legionnaires. But those guys were uh, spending their night in bars. And they told me their stories. And I, I thought, they, they have no other family. Maybe the foreign legion is military, it's hard. and. But they have nothing else, you know? They were saved, in a way, by going, entering the legend. They feel they were, they had a new family, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. I knew we were going to be on a very short uh, shooting schedule. So I decided to meet with the 15 actors every day for two months, because I thought, if we are not like a little uh, battalion, like a little troop, you know, nothing will happen. You can't go in a place where it's a very violent place. It's very beautiful, but it's also physically very violent. And in, in the process of preparing and of pre-production, um, I was told that the foreign legion was going to help me. 
to give me the uniform and trucks and jeep and arms and guns. And I was asked to come to the Ministry of Defense and they told me that the foreign legion was not uh, happy with my project. I don't understand why. And they said, the foreign legion is not happy because your film is, is about being gay. And I said, no, it's about being uh, a legionnaire. And me, I don't think this is uh, so important. Then I went to Djibouti, I went to the government, the Somal, the Djiboutian government of the Republic, and I told them, and they said, okay, we are very poor, we have only one truck, few tents, we will give them to you, you can do the film with our help. But then the legion was furious. They said they were going to, they try actually to beat us up in restaurant, they, they demolished the camp we, we built. They, and they were always observing us. Each scene, like on the next hill, next road, I could see few military watching us with binoculars. You know, it was so strange. And then when, when the film was finished and they sent some officer to see the film and they said, wow, they, they, they liked the film. They were almost crying. Because I, I told them, of course it's easy to feel love for each other, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I would, I would call that a very human thing, you know? To be so afraid was disgusting. It's a love story, you know? Uh, it, 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 uh, it's, and, it's, and it's such a potent love story. I have this line in my head from the film now where, he, where Denise's character, the master of arms, says, I was a perfect legionnaire. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that becomes his whole, his whole personality, his whole being. Yeah. And yeah. then when, when Gregor, when the young sh- soldier shows up, it's this other thing that it exists outside being the perfect legionnaire, and he mm. doesn't understand what it is no. or how to process it or what to yeah. do with it. What? And it, it breaks everything. It just breaks everything. The, the voiceover, there's a lot of voiceover in the beginning of the film, and the voiceover belongs to the master, uh, the master of arms. And then as the film goes on, there's less and less voiceover, and the film kind of becomes Gregor's. It kind of becomes the Gregor's. It kind of becomes the the soldiers. Was that in the script or was that well, in the edit? I was edit, so or? impressed by the way Jean-Luc Godard wrote the voiceover of Petit Soldat. The complete film, the Petit Soldat, is made with voiceover, and it's the voice of Michel. Subor is also the voiceover of Jules and Jim by Truffaut. I had never heard of a, a, vo- a voiceover like that before. So, so um, not theatrical, very true. It's such a great movie and with such a great voiceover and the voiceover said, it's okay, I, I will disappear. I'm still young, I have time on my side. And the fact is, the film was very true because the film was censored. It couldn't be released in theater for more than 10 years because it was condemned as a film um, Anti-Francais, you know, anti-French, you know. Uh, I mean, and I thought Michel could have been tempted, the character he, he is in The Petit Soldat, his name is Bruno, could have been tempted to hide in the legend. Because in the legend, you can change your name, you know. 
you can disappear for sure. I, I am curious about the the woman. I think I wrote her name down. Rahel, Rahel, the woman in DGPT who the master at arms. Is is there more? Was there more story between them? Were there more scenes? Her face is. There so were no more scenes. I I I have to tell you that in the script, there were really lovers, but this young woman, she was eighteen. She came from uh, Ethiopia, and she. She was afraid in Djibouti because she was Christian from Ethiopia, and Djibouti is Muslim. And she was afraid because it was her, the beginning of her life as a prostitute, you know? And she was extremely afraid of being filmed. Uh, she was not afraid in the dancing, and, and she, she knew she was very beautiful. And, but in the room with the bed and the camera, and she was 18, and I understood. And I told Denis, let's have something very uh, discreet and not making her uh, a shame, you know. You know, I, I, I really liked her so much. She trusted me, and but she was afraid of being seen only as a prostitute. She wanted me to understand she was a good Christian, and she was doing it to help her family. I know it's not far from there that they found this little woman, Lucy, this Afar woman, uh, three, million, three million years old, you know? This, this first woman they found in the desert, Lucy, she comes from this part of Ethiopia, you know, where probably the first human sort of left Africa continent, you know, going east. So it means something when you're there. You, you feel you are in a very special place where first human rise and walk on their two feet, you know. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's important, really. With. I, I, I love the way you talk about Djibouti and Ethiopia and Africa in general, um, because I think there's an, there's an element of you're always, especially the movies that are set on the continent, but also some of the movies in Paris, this idea of colonialism, France's role in colonialism, the, the sins of that, in some ways the guilt of it. And so the way you compose the, the group of men in the Legion is very interesting to me. It reminds me sometimes when the World Cup happens and the French soccer team goes out and you always hear these questions, is this France? Because there's always so many of these young men who come from other places and have immigrated to yeah. France, somewhere actually born in France. And yet there's this question, is this France? Amongst the Legionnaires, and I love there's that one Legionnaire who's learning to speak French. It's such yeah, a simple that's... scene, but it's really powerful. And, and that's... Uh... Something that happened always in the real foreign legion, because normally most soldiers for the foreign legion, they come from countries where either there are no job or they have a problem with politics, you know. They are runaways, you know. So they go to the legion to hide in a way and to find a new life. And a legionnaire, when he, he he signed his first five years, because it goes by five years. He, he, he cannot be alone. They have to be, what we say in French, a binome, two, binome. And one is supposed to speak good French, and one is learning French. One is supposed to be a trained soldier, and one is learning. So it, well, it, it's, it's the way um, they do in the legend, so I did it also. 
also when they are ironing, it's true. It's also exist in the legend. Mm -hmm. Well, and then and then my next question then it's about the um, uh, the the Muslim soldiers, which I thought was yeah. also interesting because there's it, the Ramadan. Yeah, it goes back to the master of arms to Denise character. Yeah, it's 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 only when uh, Gregor's character decides that now he will identify with this thing mm -hmm. that it causes a break because they let the soldiers sit aside and observe their religion, but it's only when it touches this thing that there's a break. Um, that's not in that's not in the book, so I'm curious how you arrived at it. The, the religion problem is, is, of course, a problem of today, but still, even though today you can kill for religion, Maybe not in the legend. In the legend, there is a sort of um, level of trust that goes a little bit. You have to respect each other so you can stand the religion of the other. But what you cannot stand is, is to be um, the one who will capture the attention. That to be that one, you know, that little angel of love. Because the commandant said nothing. He just looked at him, shared a cigarette with him, and says, Oh, you were found. It's a good found, you know. As if this little thing was enough from Galu to enough to break Galu's heart, you know? It's not much, but it's a lot. It's, it's, it's everything. Lot. It, it's, it, uh, it, it destroys him. It destroys him. And it would destroy me too, because I've been a jealous person too. Huh? I know what it is. We know it's something we can share. A religion maybe you can't share. But that feeling you, you can share. Okay, so let me ask you then, because the, the you know, I'm sure you get asked about it all the time. The embrace? Yeah, this. Yes. Yeah. Was, was that from research or was that from, the, from you working with the composer or? No, uh, it was from research. I, I, one of the, the legionnaire, the ex legionnaire who was with us, told us two things about the duel of looking at each other and never uh, surrender, you know? This was said, of course, it's not written in book, but we do that. And he said the embrace was also something after a very um, dangerous uh, exercise. They would do that, you know? This, and of course, we never rehearsed that movement. And when we were shooting on that beach and, and at sunset and they start doing it, they could not stop. And I think we were all crying. Wow. We were all crying from a sort of emotion of the, the sound of their chest and what it meant, what it meant. Now, now here's where you're so you're so good and so dangerous and so potent, because from that sequence you cut to Michelle, and he's yeah. sort of laying, you know, and he's just watching. Yeah. And and is is he physically there or is that? Yeah, he, he, he was there. He was there. Yes, he was there. Mm. Because because w when I first learned about this film, I was a student, and when mm. you were a student and you first watched Beau Travai, you always talk about homoeroticism. Yeah. Everything you talk about. And I think the juxtaposition of those two images yeah. is very, it's, it's, it's right on the line, you know? Exactly. A, a look can mean many things, an embrace can mean many things. Yeah. But I think in school, it was always reduced to, let's talk about the homoeroticism of Beau Travai. And I imagine the Legionnaires were scared as well, because here's this embrace that we don't tell anyone about, and, and yes, the embrace is, is intimate, you know? 
It's yeah. physical, but it's also intimate, you know? It's intimate, it's physical, and, and also it means I'm here for you, you are here for me, but it's, it's also brusque, you know? It's not soft, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's a contact, yeah. It's an embrace. You know, the, the other thing about watching the film, because I said last night I was watching this, these things in Minneapolis, because I, what, what, what I, I watched the video um, yeah. because I felt like uh, I had to. I wanted to be able to talk about exactly what had happened. And watching the movie last night, what I was reminded of was all these people are protesting. I say protesting, yeah. other people yeah. say rioting. Um, but I think there's many forms of protest because the, the people are there watching what is happening they have mm. their video cameras and they're telling the officer, this is wrong, he can't breathe, why are you doing this? That's protest. It's very peaceful protest. They're there, yeah, they're witnesses, just... they're saying, this is yeah. wrong. I think in your film, when the Muslim soldier's putting the ditch, he's digging all night, Gregoire then comes over and he's like, this is wrong. I'm going to give you some water. Mm. And the master of arms, Denis, kicks the water away. Yeah. And in the same way, the police don't arrest this man or kills this man. And so now it's like, okay, that protest didn't work. So now there's this protest. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was the moment where it really crystallized for me that the movie you made, it identifies with the people, with the human beings, and not yeah, the system or the institution of the Legion. To accept to see someone uh, choked to death, uh, me, I can't, I can't, I, I, I prefer to be dead. No, I'm not joking with that. I mean, it's not possible to, um, to stand something that, uh, tears your inside out, you know? I'm not brave. I'm not a brave person. I'm not brave. No, I can't. Yes, but but at the same time, we we want to believe in these systems. Yeah, we want. And so you want to believe that oh, they're they're Stop. police. Stop they're to, this. They're to protect and, and serve. So if I tell them that I see what they're doing is wrong, they will stop. Yeah. This thing, I'm a part of this legion. Yeah. If if if, if I say that this thing is wrong or has gone too far, the legion itself will understand. Yeah. And yet, the perfect legionnaire, Denis, the master at, master of arms, he's no longer anything. Now he's just human. And like as you yeah. said, he's jealous. Yeah. And so the system breaks. Yeah. And it's, um, it's inside the religion, there is a law that um, you have to obey. You have to serve. Yeah but you have to obey, and if you don't obey, you put the complete s system of the legion in danger. It, it's, it's like that. Yes, but if the legion, if the legion doesn't operate itself in a dignified way, in a just way, it also puts itself in danger. Of course, of course. Right in Minneapolis, they took over a police station. Yeah, yeah. Because the police weren't capable of operating themselves in a dignified or just way. I want to say something. I want to say that this thing happened in France too. It happened last year, twice, you know? And um, I have to say something terrible. La two years ago, a, a policeman put the stick with the stick to, to beat huh? um, in the ass of a young man. Can you imagine? I, I it, unfortunately, I, n nobody can, but we don't have to because the, these things keep, keep happening. You know, I, uh, we made this film, this James Baldwin film, Beale Street, and there's a scene where the main character and this other character, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel, played by Brian Tyree Henry, he's talking about his experience um, in jail. And someone reposted the scene on Twitter yesterday um, because of all these things that are happening in Minneapolis. And you just, 
you know, the book was written in 1977 and we made the film in 2018. And now it's 2020. And that scene from 77 on the page, 2018 in, in this film, and now it's still, when is it going to not be relevant? You know, it, it needs to not be relevant um, very fast. Okay, I want to change the subject. I'm going to change the subject. I, I can't talk to you about this film without talking about the ending. The rhythm of the night. <laughs> yes, exactly. You probably talked about this in other interviews too many times, but... Never too many, because I, I, it's such a great moment to remember. In the script, it was written as he knew he was leaving Djibouti for good. He wanted to go for a last time in the bar. And he started dancing like the last dance of his life that he danced to death. It was written like more or less something, a, a sentence like that, no, nothing else. And then I told to Denny, you can listen that song. But, I mean, it's a famous one, but we won't rehearse. We won't rehearse. We will do it at the end of the day with all, and the camera will be static. That's it. And we did it like that, like, uh, Denis was, wow, I thought that he was able to fly, you know, he was able to do anything, you know, and we were like with him, so much with him. Oh, oh, with a static camera, sometimes you feel so much the movement, you know? I know, but what was strange about it was it made me so sad. It made me so sad because I thought to myself, well, he, 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 he's away from it, and now, and now he realizes he he needs this. He wants it so much. And I thought there are so many places he could go in France where he can be around people, you know, who are maybe not from Djibouti, but maybe from Ethiopia, from from these other places. And yet he chooses to go be alone. It just made me so sad. And I just I love that the images can be open so many different ways, you know. You're not forcing the viewer to take one read on the image. And the feeling I get, you know, whether this time or the first time I saw the film is still very powerful. I, I got so sad. I mean, maybe I'm just in a very sad place right now. I think we all are, but it just made me so sad. We are sad and, and now this period is sad and yet, um, yeah, it's a sad moment for, you know, in the script, this dance moment, was written before he's back in Marseille, before he's preparing the bed and taking the gun, before he's committed suicide. And in the editing room, I, I, I told the editor, Nelly, I told her, I don't want, I don't want to end on the vein beating and the gun. Let's change the scene. Let's put the dance at the end, because I cannot stand um, the... I, I would prefer him dancing to his death, really, you know, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're near the end here. I just got a notification that the officer um, who, uh, who killed George Floyd has just been arrested, so huh? I, think that's a, I think that's a good place to end. Um, yeah, it's a good place to end, and yet it, it's um, a conclusion, a normal conclusion of a horrible story. Yes. Mm. Yes, but that is still being written, um, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So thank you, thank you very, very much. Thank you, my dear. It's always a pleasure.